It's happy hour at the Banner Bar. Today is wine, clearly. So we'll drink some wine, we'll tell you what we think. And that'll be that, answering questions along the way. First up is Arbor Mist, mango, strawberry. I like grapes. While he's doing that, you folks, uh, last time you seen me, I had hair down my asshole. I'll tell y'all a little story about what happened. See, there's a story behind my haircut. Did you hear the story? I did not. I'm going to enlighten you too. We was playing poker at the Nervous Hospital. And uh, we play with cigarettes because that's all we got. Can you hear me? And uh, I caught Cletus had his hand over in my cigarette pile. And I got mad at him. We started scuffling. Fucking Nurse Ratchet come over and I slapped that bitch. And they, uh, before they decided to shock the shit out of me, they shaved my head so they could put them deals on my head and shot the fuck out of me. So Explains. But anyway, that's just what's happened is they cut all my fucking hair off. You feel good about it at least? I feel cooler. You know, summer almost did me in with that long hair. Well. But... I'm ready to get drunk. You feel man. like you're stupid for that story you just told. Just have a look at that. Yeah. I'm I, trying to wine bottle it. open it and just yeah. fucking twist off. Ooh, Ooh that right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that don't work too well on plastic, I don't care. Yeah, I, don't, oh I got corkscrews man. made for plastic. <laughs> so clearly yeah, a cheap right. wine. Apologies. We fixing to remedy all this meat, all these mishaps here. We fix to take care of all of them. Alcohol solves all your issues. That's right? it. At least for a little while. Hmm. Question is, which sport are you probably best at? Depends on what you call a sport. <laughs> I think I got too much of that one right there. Six percent. Already, already making me pucker. It smells a lot higher than six percent. It does, boy. It, it just, just makes your mouth water just smelling it. It's going to be good, folks. A lot of strawberry. You know what? I think I could become a wino. Yeah? You know what? Because it's just like Kool-Aid. Yeah. I mean... Mm. It's uh, it's low in alcohol. I think it's it's probably somewhere between... Like a Boone's Farm and a normal wine. It's good, though. I like the mango hint on top of the strawberry. <clears throat> that has got a damn good taste to it. Mm -hmm. What is that shit? Arbor Mist. Next time I want to get in some panties, though. Some Arbor Mist, mango, strawberry, Moscato. I used to get some Blackberry Arbor Mist that just mm. floored me. It's very high in sugar content, so... Mm. That shit right there is good. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a six. Uh I'm gonna top you. I'm gonna do a seven easy. I could drink that whole bottle myself real fast. We all know your world famous helicopter man player. <laughs> what other type of sport are you probably good at? Well, I'd have to go with one other sport. I played the shit until I physically couldn't play it, play it anymore. Softball. I love me some softball, especially playing co-ed. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, just I love softball. I think it's the only type I ever saw you play. Yeah. It I, sounds like he's joking, but he's not joking. It's yeah, co-ed. I played a lot of softball. You know, I'd, I'd play at one point. I was playing four or five nights a week, and of course, you know it tend to cause problems every now and again but but hey it's uh it was fun it kept me healthy now it's fucking falling apart uh, anyway well i didn't answer the question i'm trying to throw it away <laughs> you tell me yeah i don't know uh, people always tried to say football i never felt good about that i always thought if i really tried basketball yeah probably I don't know. I'm used to it. Grew up, you know. Well, I tried to play football, but, you know, I just kept 
bench warm for somebody else to come over and sit on it. You know, that's about all I was good for in football. Uh, uh, like it's like the saying goes, I would never was picked for it. Hey, as long as you found something to get you on the field. Softball was a fun deal. I thought I was going to get drafted at any point. So I remember going to a lot softball. of the games. Yeah. It was it good was, times. Yep. Uh, uh, seemed like forever ago, too, to me. Yeah. You know, it's been a minute. What are you, fucking 40 now? The memories are, I'm not quite there yet. No. <laughs> yeah, but you're I'm getting there, it. yeah. I know. Yeah, see, it's... A little boot-kissing ass kid and fucking... <laughs> You want to play catch? Sure. <laughs> Time flies. The mango comes through a lot on this one after a while. Just sitting here, like I'm tasting a lot of mango. Still can, yep. It's good. It's yeah, really good. It sure is. Next up is Bay Bridge Rosé. Not Rose. That Rose shit. Say. Is that what you said? That <laughs> Rose shit. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Do you have to be mentally ill to continually be worth more than $1 billion? Do okay. you have to be mentally ill to continually be worth more than a billion dollars? That question's pretty loaded. Yeah. Just assumes that someone's mentally ill or even. Yeah, well, all you got to do is watch a couple of these episodes and you'll see, you'll, you'll draw a conclusion real <laughs> quick. <You know? laughs> I ain't all there. And I never told anybody I was, so there you go. A liar I'm not. I got a little, little peach color to it, a little rose color. Mm -hmm. I'm scared of the smell. I don't say that often in life. What's the percentage on that one? Does it say 10.5%? Oh, yeah. yeah, we doubled up here. What is that? I mean, it is not a bad taste. It's not, obviously, it's not, it, you can't, don't have the sweetness that the, the last one had. Yeah. But this one's got a taste to it that. I, as far as I know, it's, it's still just going to be grape. I don't know what the combination is or what type of grape it is. But it tastes, maybe it's just the grape. A type of grape. It's, there's a flat kind of ah uh, shit. Usually, that grape doesn't hang like that. It just it's tart. It's like they took a white wine and put a light amount of some sort of juice in it. Grapefruit. Almost. Maybe. It's a little sweeter. Yeah. Maybe. Airplane. Saddam. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a hard one to figure out. It, maybe it is just a grape. Uh, maybe you spoiled us with the first fucker there. That, that shit there was yeah. pretty damn pretty good to me because I like sweet things. I mean, they call it wine, but... Seems it's like Kool Aid. Yeah. That's where the, the, the slang Kool Aid <laughs> comes from. But yeah, I'd, I'd go five leaning to a six on that one. Okay. I'd have to agree with the five. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not as off putting as a lot of light wines I've had or white wines I've had. I've even had worse rosés in the past. It's just. I'm not a light wine person, and even though this looks like a blush, like, right. a, like a blend, yeah, it's it's not. It's more on the white wine side. Hmm. So the billion dollars part of this question didn't strike you as much as the mentally ill part did. No, <laughs> no, because it's obvious that billion dollar question right there is just shit. Yeah, you, know, you know what? You can shit in one hand and wish in the other one. See which one fills up faster. Hey, I'm, I'll never have a billion dollars. Now, will I be mentally ill at some point? I'm probably already getting there. But do you feel like if you had a billion dollars and you kept it, like you always had to have more than a billion dollars, do you feel like that would be mental illness or do you just... 
I think money is the root of all evil. I mean, it it could it could put you there, okay, real easy. I mean, <laughs> but you can have fun doing it. <laughs> but Fair yeah, point. It, it can people. Uh, money can money can change people. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, definitely. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and like I said at the outset, the question is pretty loaded. So I obviously would say yes. There's a few billionaires that, you know, I think are have lost their minds. So. I would agree. I don't understand how you're going into outer space when, you know, <laughs> what is it, like a third of the world is starving and you could solve that for so much less than what you're worth. Beam me up, Scotty. You know. Yeah, I know. But it... it a lot of what's going on nowadays doesn't not does not make any sense. But you know, the world is an ever changing place, and it is not. There's there's no reverse. And as you age, you'll you'll see that you'll you'll when you get my age, you'll look back and say, "Damn, man, I wish I was back in so and so day or whatever." It just I never would have pictured seeing or living through some of the things we live through today well i would agree so and, and it's you know i thought the 90s were cool the 90s were a blast <laughs> hey the 80s were even better yeah some uh, of what i remember from that was some our, of your some of your fans can attest to that too they got my back on that and uh, we had some fun in the 80s and the 90s you know we were making babies but it was still fun uh, once we hit 2000, man, things just kind of changed. Uh, and I don't think it did so much for y'all as it did for the, I don't know, even know what generation they call us. But newer <clears throat> for y'all. But it did, yeah, for us. But but it did, you know, and, and, and as time marches on, you know, it continues to change, you know. Uh, my boy whooped my ass for the first time the other day. We was playing around in Braver's backyard, and Pucker got me right. down. I was like, man. Uh, and he, and the, way, the way he did it kind of pulled my shoulder out. And, and you know, I kind of had to had to stop him. And, and I don't know if you know is if my pride was hurt worse than my shoulder was. But, you know, I was like, damn, boy. We warned you for years. He you needed to fuck. quit while you were ahead. Yeah, well, he, <laughs> And he thinks he's conquered the walk now, boy. Now I finally put dad down. Well, you some bitch now it just means I'm gonna grab a bat next time. That's all. So, but yeah, things change. That's all I'm saying. Oh uh, shit. Well, I feel you. I don't want my kid kicking my ass either. I'm sure it'll come someday. <laughs> well, it, it was all in. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we were. You know, you know how I get. You know, yeah. play grab ass with him out there in the yard and wrestle around. Well. Well, and no, you know, not, not that I can't run anymore, but now I can't even wrestle around anymore. So, right. you know, you got to know your limits. Uh, and if you don't, you'll figure them out as you get older. So, I've anyway. had some experience with that, believe it or not. But there's nothing holding me back from getting drunk. Well, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to the show. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So next up is a Cabernet Sauvignon from Three Wishes. Again, I'm pretty sure this is cheap. Most of I don't know. It don't want to have one of them plastic screw on lids. <laughs> is that the new definition? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that one cost me more than three wishes bottles. Well, that one there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could drink a whole lot of that. I might find out after the show where you got to take so don't take me some home. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's corner store. You can probably get them at Get them split tails drunk yeah. on that. Now that's red grape. Purple grape. She's red, all right. Three wishes. Question is, how much daily alone time do you crave? Man, that's not a question at all for me. Taste the wine and we'll figure out why. Mm. Boy, you can smell the difference in it. Yeah. You know you're in red territory now, which I like a lot. It reminds me of grape juice, and then they usually have this tart. Yeah, I think it's uh, reds are, are usually a little more tart than whites, aren't they? 
it will bitter, I think is what people say. It's a tart for the light and then bitter for the reds. Mm. This one's still pretty sweet. I mean, it's different. Yeah, there's that bitterness. What's the percentage in that one? 13. Yep, you can taste it. That's even more than the the last two. The last one was 10, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You can definitely taste it. Mm. You're going to have me napping on your couch after this is all over with. I mean, it is what it is. Mm. It's good stuff. My opinion. I don't know. I like I like reds. Something about the whites. I just I want it mixed with Sprite and ice. I don't just want to drink it by itself. But the reds. Yeah, you'd be passed out on the couch in no time. But yeah, yeah damn sure. And, and the more you drink, the better, more bitter it gets. It seems like. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff that hangs around on your tongue. I think it's just building up. Yeah. You know? But you can also, uh, you can also feel this going down. I mean, you, 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 this this stuff will go to the head pretty fast, and it's I, cold. Yeah, which is weird. You can still feel that warmth, mm -hmm. like right below your lungs, where it starts to hit. <clears throat> it's not overly sweet. I like that. I don't know. I'm a bitter fan, so yeah, this one's gonna get a seven from me. Is it? Yeah. And I'm not going to do a seven only because I'm I prefer sweets and ain't nothing. Makes sense. That I've come along tops that first one yet, but I will go a six. I think it's better than the last one we did. And then daily alone time. Why is this not a question? Uh, because it's not. I mean, uh, it, uh, for me, it's not. Uh, I require as much alone time as possible to keep my sanity. Okay. At my age. I'm always looking for a long time slash quiet time. Yep. Always. So, and it's healthy for you too. Agreed. You know? I'm happy to be in a relationship too where that's kind of understood. I know when you start having kids, you do crave, you know, the alone time that you don't get with your partner. Yep. But we still crave a long time individually. Yep. And that's, that's been an easy part of communication. But we saw a meme recently talking about how, we didn't realize growing up when people said that having kids that couldn't hear themselves think that they meant that shit literally. Yeah, I, I think they call it chill time in today's in today's world. I need my chill time, but you know, luckily I'm 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 blessed enough to have somebody that will you know that it's okay for me to go camping for the weekend or yeah. for a few days off. You know, she she doesn't do the outdoor stuff. By God, I do, and and I'll get out there just to listen to the wind blow. Yeah, you know, so it's nice. It's a nice change of pace when you get it. Yeah, you get scared of empty nest. I do. Yeah, uh, I do. You know, I don't see, and that's the that's the the irony of it is I don't want per se an empty nest. You know, kids is looking forward to it. You know, and I, I told her, I said, you you don't understand what it's going to be like when you can't hear the pitter patter, you know, running up and down. It's it's coming. Yeah. You know, and, and as close as I am, especially that little girl, you know, uh, it's it's going to do it's going to do things to me. I know, never even them boys, you know, screaming and hollering. It, it when, that's going to be missed when when they do ever decide to move out or, or whatever, you know. Uh, when the noise first started in, I remember thinking, all right, well, I'm close enough to when we didn't have the noise. So right. I, I know that was great. So it'll be okay once it gets back to that. Yeah. But you also have to realize how how much different, how much more enlarged your heart gets for the kids once yep. you have them or whatnot. And I never talked to Amy and Tommy about it, yeah. but I do remember talking to... Uh, great aunt on my dad's side at one point uh -huh. because they did some of the same stuff like sit out on the porch for hours and i remember asking her like why do y'all sit outside so much don't you get like sunburn it's the middle of summer and it's just like ridiculously hot or yeah. you know you run out of shows to watch on tv or something right no it's just you hear the noise 
Yeah. She's like, you hear sometimes the family noise that's going on or you hear nature and it just, I guess, is a nice reminder because it's not what's in the house anymore. Yep. So that, it freaks me out as much as I like to complain about yeah, it. <laughs> it, it. It's going to be, it's going to take some getting used to when that day comes. Uh, not so much for her, but for me, it's, it's. Uh, it's going to be a challenge, but shit, you travel um, enough, you'll be seeing them anyway. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I, uh, I don't know. I just have them there all the time, you know, but knowing they're safe, you know. Anyway. Yeah, that would terrify me. The knowing they're safe. <laughs> so I didn't know what this was, by the way. I thought it was just Pinot Grigio. Just but fucking buy it. Let's find out. It's uh, it's another three wishes. Okay. But it says it's 51% Pinot Grigio and 49% Columbard. All right. Well, like I said, I'll drink piss you put it in a cup, not tell it's, me about it. It's a little lower in alcohol content than this one. It's 12%. Well, if you were going to open a restaurant, what would set yours apart from the competition? You ever considered opening a restaurant? Uh, well, you know, it's funny you say that because... Uh, I never thought about cooking until we lost her mother. You know, her mother did all the cooking in the house. And when we lost her uh, back in 2012, somebody had to learn how to cook. Guess <laughs> it was you? Not, uh, I ain't talking <laughs> bad on you, woman, but you know, uh, my wife didn't, Kiss does not know how to cook, so, and she has no desire to learn. So it was I was going to say, I'm sure she could. She just doesn't want to. But as far as your, back to your question, I've never really thought because I've worked fast food and I know what that, what it's like. Mm -hmm. And that's not for me. Okay. I just so. didn't know. I always wondered because I've done the fast food thing too. And I seen, I did uh, grill cooking at the bowling alley mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that. And I always wondered if there was a point in time uh, you had one job. Was it burgers? God, no. Is that what that was? Like it was a no, burger joint? No, sir. It was one of the best places in Denton back in the day. It's called Barbecue Pit, folks. You barbecue folks remember pit. that? Nine of LaSalle's Barbecue Pit. God almighty, that shit was good. They had dollar burger Sundays. I didn't know that. Those were and, big burgers. Yes, and, and for a dollar. And by God, we made a million fucking hamburgers on Sunday. People would come in and order 10, 13 hamburgers at a time. Yeah, Sundays were hopping over there at the barbecue pit on Eagle. I just didn't know. I didn't know if that was an enjoyable experience or if... It was, it was cool. The atmosphere was great. I mean, it's mainly uh, college kids in there working, you know, and then I, it, that's a second job for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked at the sheet metal shop and then I'd come home in the evenings and do that. And uh, shit, you know, hang out with them college kids, make you feel your youth again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, of course, they served beer there, too. So, you know, it made the night go by faster. But jobs like that are go, go, go anyway. It feels like time just flies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one definitely smells strange off the top. More like a beer, actually. It's got a punch to it, man. To me. Yeah. That's, that's the light grape. Damn it. It's got a good punch to it. It does. It's reminding me of like a, a European malt beer or something in the smell. It doesn't taste like that. Yeah. I maintain, by the way, that a lot of these cheap bottles of wine rival some of the, you know, multi hundred dollar bottles that you can get in restaurants and stuff. We've had those at like holiday parties and whatnot. Oh, man. You got to pour it to the side over there if you don't want to finish her off. No. Uh, Are I'm you good with it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I kind of like, I kind of like having my balls twisted. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah to make you pucker up. Woo. Mm. Wow. I don't know how to rate that one. For me, it's it's probably more drinkable than most white wines I've had. Again, maybe I just haven't had enough Columbard grapes. But... Is that where you think that punch comes from? You said you've had the, the Pinot? 
I think the uh, the spice flavor note that I'm getting, like the stuff that's balancing it out, is the columbard. The pinot grigio is what's that's the tart trick. getting you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why I like to mix it with you know sodas or whatnot. Right. For spritzers. I mean, but it, as far as just drinking the wine by itself, it's one of the better ones that I've had, but I'm still just going to go with a six on that one. It's still good for a white wine. If you're a white wine fan, you might absolutely love that. That's probably where I'm going to go. Uh, pro- well, I think I'm going to go a high five. Uh, it's, it's right there. It's just under, you know, for me. Okay. Only because it's got such a punch to it, you know, it's like, Shit, you get a real glass of that shit, and you. Yeah, I was surprised though. It doesn't, it doesn't build up over time the way that the darks were. Right. So it's not like you're just. Yeah, it's on there top. and then it's gone. Yeah, almost like lemonade. Right. Or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. What kind of restaurant you gonna open? We've actually joked about this in my house. I love to cook, but the food that I cook most often that's most successful. Uh, we tend to refer to it as slop. Yeah. Because it's just an amalgamation of different flavors. That's and good different food, things by the way. <laughs> that's that's what I mean. Yeah, it would be I like love slop. Yeah. Casseroles and that sorts of thing. Yep, goulashes and just yes. shit thrown together. Yes. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, that does feed a lot of people cheap. Mm-hmm. I, I know what you mean. So I think the twofold answer there would be that I would be going for unique things things you don't see on every menu right so you can't just get it anywhere and it it wouldn't necessarily be american food or mexican food or you know right just be whatever i felt like was great that people loved and also you have to lean into that weird slop category and call things like off-putting names like the beans that you like so much that i bring around sometimes those (laughs) Dookie beans is what those have affectionately been referred to. Dookie now. beans. <laughs> yes. Dookie beans, and they live up to every word. Now, this, uh, if I were to do it, if I were to open a restaurant, or I, I've taken a, uh, I've taken a hanker into uh, uh, smoking meat because I've got that pit smoker now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hell, I smoke everything, you know. You can you can cook peats into some bitch, you know. That's that, the, really? that those pellet grills are the shit, dude. I'm telling you. Well, Toby got one too. That's what you well, missed for, out on yeah. that company for today's question. Well, then. he asked me about it last time we were all together, and I said, "Man, you can't go wrong." And you know, all you real barbecuers out there, you call us pussies because we, you know, get a pellet grill and say it's cheating. <laughs> I don't care what you call me, man. If you can put a brisket or a pork butt on there at 200 degrees and go in there and go to bed. You know, you don't have to sit there and drink all night. You can go to sleep, wake up next morning and your shit's still cooking. Uh, it's nice. And, and, and it, they work, you know, right. They, they, you know, those little pellets, they, they still give it that smoke flavor. I would it'd probably have something to do with, you know, red meat or, or, you know, turkey, bird, whatever I could, Put on the grill, okay. on smoker. I just have to jazz it up with some kind of entertainment, you know. Now I've heard of people opening laundromats with, you know, with bars in them and shit like that, right. you know, where you could watch a sports bar, you know. Uh, and they, of course, they got Hooters, but uh, Hooters has kind of fallen by the wayside. <laughs> you know, they don't. Now the girls are complaining about wearing these shorts that are too small and shit just like that. So take take hooters just out. Just take all the clothes the off. <laughs> yeah, just take the clothes off, man. You know, and serve some fucking barbecue. <laughs> Squirt a little sauce on yourself and get after it. I don't know. You know, uh, a, we, I've talked some somewhat about this before in different spots, but there was a place called Redneck Heaven. You ever been there? Uh-huh. It's a uh, country cooking mostly yeah. right yeah but they they have that hooters you know the girls are wearing skimpy outfits or whatnot right and we were there for toby's bachelor party like lead up to where they were going to the strip club or whatever right. i went with joseph and we just hung out for dinner because he was still too young to go to strip club yeah and got up to piss at one point and you go in the bathroom at the stalls where you're pissing and it's a mirror in front of you where you're pissing. 
so you can just see anyone and everyone while you're pissing. Right. And I felt so uncomfortable peeing in that bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, if I look to my side, I'm scared I'm going to see some dude just stroking it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> some fucking hung-ass fucking mule next to you, you feel awful small right beside you, like, fuck, you know? Well, let me tell you something. When you get old, you got to fucking that deals with you, but you don't. It don't bother you. Well, know? I wasn't worried about my day. You know? I wasn't worried about size. It's just the fact that you can see out into the restaurant, so you can see all the servers walking around, and it's just like that would be that would trip me out. You know, know what I mean? If you could see people out there in the, you know, servers doing their thing, and you're pissing. Tell me something. Just fuck. in there stroking it. That's what I was worried about. <laughs> to a server at that. Had to look at my own table like they're eating, yeah, they're eating bull testicles over there. Just just remember that. That's funny. Yeah, that is funny. No, nah, I, uh, I don't know. You know the way, the way things are today. I don't. I really don't think you're gonna have to worry about that. I don't know if you've. Uh, well, I know you've been going through drive-throughs and shit, and realize how how long it takes to get something through a drive-through anymore. Mm -hmm. COVID has fucked the, the fast food industry up. Mm -hmm. Not only are they shorthanded and, and a lot of the dining areas are closed simply because they don't have the help to keep a dining area open, but it puts that much more strain on the drive through Fuck, I've seen, I've seen Chicken Express places all the way out the road. Yep. You know, and it, that's hideous when it takes 45 minutes to get a box of chicken wings, you know, or, or tenders. And... I don't know if it's ever going to be back the way it was. You know? That's a question. Because uh, it's, you know, we're still, we're st we've still got a lot of hurdles to overcome. So I don't know, you know. But yeah, I'd like to go into place and you know, have a woman serve me half naked or even <laughs> naked. That'd even be even better, you know. <laughs> I, I think, might eat two plates. I mean, even if you thought going in you were going to see, you know, that sort of thing every day, it, the restaurant business just, it took me a while to realize. I thought it was a good idea for a while. And the older I get, the more I realize there's not a profit margin there. There's like they not. work and work and work and just, you have to just love it. Yeah. Period. Yep. So Stella's Rosa. 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 Black. Okay. I'm fucking this all up. I, th I kept thinking it was Stella, like the beer. It's not Stella Rosa. La Original Black. Never had a black wine. De la Rosa. It's a a low alcohol grape wine with specialty with natural flavors. Hmm. Okay. Where how much alcohol is in this? That little pistol bullet looks like it's got about fifteen percent alcohol. Right? <laughs> I thought it was sure is normal. Five percent. That's so we're right in this territory, yeah, that's right? Be drinkable, I have a feeling. And it's going to be, I don't know, it says natural flavors. I bet it's sweet. I bet it's got some sugars in it. Four. The question is, what question do you think we'll mm. never have an answer to? Oh, that's dark. What question do you think we'll never have an answer to? <laughs> it's carbonated. Man, yeah, it is. No, oh, and it fucking smells sweet. Oh, fuck. It smells like cranberry juice. Yep, yep. That could get that question could go a million ways, by oh, the way. I, know. I don't mind going a million ways with the question. The smell is pleasing. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. I told you that shit sweet. Sweet is a Fuck. Hey, look, this this your new number one right here. Ding, ding. Yep. <clears throat> that is some nice tasting stuff to me. It's probably a little too sweet for you, I have a feeling. It's actually not bad. The smell, I was expecting cranberry juice, mm -hmm. and the sugar actually dials that down. So it's, it's just something. mellow, and it's carbonated. I actually like it quite a bit. Mm. I could drink the fuck out of this. And the nice thing about it too is it's only five percent. Yeah, I mean you can you can hammer these back. There's something. It reminds me of something specific, some specific taste. 
I can't even taste the alcohol in this. Uh, the carbon, the carbonation sweet. kind of fucking hides that some of that too. It just yeah, kind of a little magic trick of a drink. I don't know why they call it black, but it's unique, I guess. I'm gonna have me a little more, folks. It reminds me of uh, the fancy beer. Fancy raspberry beer that we buy all the time. And maybe that's what it is. It smells like cranberry juice, but it tastes more like raspberry. Raspberry. Because of the yeah, sweetness. Yeah, I can get that. What I will say is if you're a hardcore wine person, this is more in Arbor Mist category. It's not... You're thinking more of like a, yeah. a carbonated sweet wine drink, not like a bitter mm -mm. wine thing. That's not what this is. If okay. you ask me if this was wine or beer, I may not have even known... Shy of that, it's it's pretty hard to find fault with. Hell, you can you can give this to your kiddos, put them to sleep at night. Shit, they'll drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> they won't have a problem with it. I'm gonna go with an eight on that one. Definitely, I'm right there with you. Definitely an eight. And the question is, can you buy a big ass bottle of it for cheap? Yeah, because that's what would be nice to know. What question do you think we'll never have the an, an answer to? <laughs> Well, it really depends on how much time you got to kill, but, you know. The uh, question is, which way do you want to go with it? Well. What's important to you to talk about? By the way, this, I don't understand. When did I become a chapstick person? I used to be a Burt's Bees person like crazy. <laughs> At some point, I just started buying cheap ass uh, plain some, chapsticks. Some fucking Susie chapstick commercials get did you in, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Might have been Susie, baby. Uh, what question? You've always got your, you know, your theories of evolution, you know, uh, that can always be debated back and forth. Uh, You've got politics that go back and forth. Neither one of them I really care to uh, uh, get into at this point. But what question we'll never have an answer to? I guess my question would have to be, and it's one that will never be answered because obviously the person to answer it won't be able to answer it. It's their life after death. Okay. Well, this is going to surprise you, I'm sure, but the uh, question I was thinking of is what happens when you die? So, <laughs> pretty much the right, same yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, is there life after death? Or will we come back as, as monkeys or ants or, you know, birds? Or or do we just, you know, does our soul, you know, get moved into another, uh, and a newborn? Or how, what the, you know, we lay there and fucking disintegrate? Yeah. That's one that'll never be answered. Exactly. So, you know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. They may get closer to the answer. <laughs> or it may be one of those cases where waiting and seeing doesn't actually tell us anything. Right. Maybe we just but like we'll I, never know. Like I said on the on, on the last time I was on, the older you get, the less you really fucking care about it. You know, you don't you don't you get to where you don't fear death, you know. Yeah, that's we'll never have an answer to that. Is their life after death? My my expectation is we won't ever have an answer. Maybe we'll go live on Vega. You know, have you seen that movie <laughs> Contact? Huh? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that would be cool. Get sucked through a wormhole, and man, that looked like a pretty cool place to live, if you ask me. Yeah. I and mean, it's a it's a strange question, and I think buying Jodie Foster and a lot of. Them. <laughs> There it is. I was waiting on it. I'm just I knew Bang Jody Foster was coming in at some point. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. uh, Hannibal Lecter, her ass. Hell like, yeah. God almighty. You're damn right. I don't Rubs. remember what I was thinking. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its body. <laughs> yep. Holy shit. But you know, that's why I guess that's what dreams are made of. And you know, that could be that could be tied into death too is, is you know your dreams oh, who fuck knows because yeah. I have a lot of nice dreams you know you think you're in heaven and then you wake up 
That's what I'm saying. Fuck, I want to go back to I don't, I don't tend to trust anyone who tries to tell me that they know. Because I don't know. I'm the nobody first does. Yeah, nobody does. You know, and this is the, the thing. I think a lot of people get convinced by, a, say, you have a near death experience or yeah. maybe an out of body experience or yeah. stuff. Now, I've had stuff like that because of the she's or stuff. And I'm yep. sure you've had a little more experience now because your daughter's. You know, yeah, I've I've the- gone through that, and I've I've had some situations, or I have I've had some experiences that I can't explain either. Yeah. Uh, now I've never seized or anything like that, but I've had some experiences that, that I I just can't explain to you. Now, that being said, don't get me wrong. I do believe that there's. Uh, if somebody passes, their spirit can remain, okay. uh, especially if they tend to pass in the house you're living in. Okay. Uh, I've seen it. I've dealt with it. I've I've seen, you know, that shit you see on TV with fucking shit falling off of stuff and, and noises and shit. That shit's happened to us before. I had something thrown at me and I was in the middle of the fucking floor sitting on the ground. And it come off the fireplace mantle and was launched about eight feet across the room. Yeah. And I've got witness to that. But it, you know, uh, I guess I pissed somebody off you know, before they pass. Maybe. But, but man, maybe they were just trying to get our attention to let us know that they're still around. But, you know, that's been a long time ago and and we haven't had anything since. But, but uh, you know, until they, until they, move on to wherever they're moving on to, I still think they can linger around and and at least, you know, let you know that they're still around. I'm very uh, distrustful of my personal experience uh-huh. because of the sheer amount of hallucinations and whatnot that I've had to deal with. Right. But at the same time, I also don't, I don't find myself in the category that a lot of you know, non-believers or whatnot find themselves in. I do tend to think that, you know, we're conscious in this universe. Yeah. And some random point in time, I I tend to think that maybe that's all connected somehow. Yeah. You know, that maybe from a different, I think the best writing I've ever seen on this topic in general or the end of some Mike Flanagan shows like Midnight Mass or Haunting at Hill House, that sort of thing. I think he does a really great job of blending those two vibes, you know, the religious with the, the scientific, you know, natural universe right. based stuff, because I tend to be somewhere in the middle a lot more than I think a lot of people want to think. Right. Like I'm not, I'm not that person who tells you that your life is pointless and you should never do anything. You know, right. I don't, I don't discount what people tell me, Yeah. So, but I also distrust my own brain. So. <laughs> Right, yeah, I, I will. and I'm like you. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't trust, you know, anything I read or hear, and only half of what I see. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, that one got a little wet. It's stuck, folks. But you know, <laughs> we're gonna get it. And we're gonna read it. But <laughs> which leads up to the next question: How do you like that shit? Where do you get your news? Okay. <laughs> I was fucking scared. <laughs> this is Barefoot's sweet, sweet red blend. This smells sweet. It also smells like a red wine. So we're out of this. Yeah, it's going to be in the middle. It's, it's not going to be as sweet. It's going to be more bitter, but I still smell sweetness in it. Bitterness is mm-hmm. light. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. Whoo! Cow pow! Yep, and it's bitter too. You get that sweetness as soon as it hits your tongue. You get that sweet. But you sit there and let it hang in your throat for a minute, and it's just like. Where's your other cup at? Right here. Well, what you gonna do to me? Just try that side by side. Hmm.
much much sweeter uh my palate may just be used to it i'm not getting a lot of bitter on this sweet one. really mm -hmm. I, i'm getting bitter but it doesn't last long okay uh, the sweetness is i mean it's the instant you it hits your tongue i mean it's sweet mm -hmm. and it's strange it's almost like a buttery sweet it's it's yeah, it's hard to explain Bottle says it's supposed to come across like black cherry and plum. Maybe it's the plum. Yeah. Uh, th that over there is, is that's just nine kinds of red tart. Uh, this is, you know, I guess this this is the deceiving one in here because it, it it gives you that sweetness first and then. Why not a pucker? You. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of a, just a regular grape. Like if you're used to eating, you know, just red grapes. Here in the states, it's pretty much what you're gonna get. Uh, yeah, it's sweet. This is doable, really. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely doable. I think I'd get sick on it after a while. It is, it's it's, it's yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, you know, that's. I have never. Uh, there goes the story. I've never, you know, in all my day, and I've we've drank a lot of wine back in our day. Of course, you know, if you ask any of your kin. It was Boone's Farm. We kept them fuckers yeah. in business in the 80s. I've never gotten sick off wine. Really? Every day, every time I have got sick, it was off liquor or beer. I never got sick off wine. I don't think you have the chance. I think by the time you get enough wine in you to get fucking sick, you're <laughs> passed out. You know, because it just, I don't know. It, I've never gotten sick off wine. Drunker than fuck, but never sick. Yeah. I, what was strange is I remember drinking a lot of wines at a certain point in my life and feeling like, okay, you get lit enough and you think, this is going to be it. This is going to be the night that I finally have limp dick because of my drinking or something. <laughs> Never happened with yeah, wine. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've gotten sick, but I've gotten sick drinking things like this. Yeah. And they're low alcohol content. You have yep. to drink a bunch of it. Yeah. The, and that see, and that could probably do it. Or these right here might, you know. Yeah. If you've got enough of them to toss back. The carbonation on that might come back and get you. But I think, you know, a, a lot of our thing about Boone's Farm was, and, and, the, and Mad Dog too, they sold that shit in easy checks back mm -hmm. in the day, you know. And and who just happened to fucking run all the easy checks? He didn't own them, but he ran them. Uh, was your granddaddy. Yeah. So, That's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> took, so we go in there, a second. I was like, okay, we go in there and get whatever the fuck we wanted, you know, especially if your daddy was behind the counter at one of them, you know, it's, it's back in the day. Where do you get your news? <sighs> you know, this one interests me somewhat. I have well, say. I, 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 I. I don't plan to argue with you today. Just so you okay. Know. Not well, that we argue, but well, I don't watch the fucking news anymore, and this this Same. doesn't have anything to do with being red or blue or, or liberal or conservative, whatever. Uh, the news has shown both sides of the political spectrum just how much of a liars they can be and how deceiving they can be for a dollar. Okay. So. Uh, I really don't watch the news. I'm not in disagreement with anything you've said so far. The, what I do get my information from is, is the internet, and you kind of have to juggle, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's real and what's uh, fantasy, as they say, or make-believe. Uh, that's where I get my news from. Uh, you, can, you can find real news. You can find some fucked up shit on the internet it, you just have to uh i guess you know it's really trusting and, and there's there's that word again i don't trust anybody yeah. anymore you know well, it's uh, hard to with the news media like we have it is uh and and you're you're you know when everything's political and fucking government wants in every aspect of your fucking life you know, what's it going to be like in 20 years if we last that long? Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. You know, uh, 
I don't know where we're headed. You know, we buy our gas from Russia now. They shut down the Keystone Pipeline just to buy gas from Russia. Yep. And fucking why? And I don't have trouble with the notion of government as much as you do, but I do have problems with our system of government. And I have trouble with clearly our dependency on other countries. Yes. So we're in it. Making ourselves dependent yeah. on other countries. On purpose well, see, to and, save a dollar. And a lot of a lot of what you're saying, I, I can understand. But you also have to understand, you don't you never saw what it was like, and I didn't for the most part. I was just a baby. But but you know, back in the day we didn't have government services like CPS and and, and uh all these different services that, you know, could tell you how to raise your child. And we never had a problem with the way our kids, back in the day, we didn't have kids shooting up fucking schools and shit. Yeah. You know, uh, it just, the kids, you know, we didn't ride, you know, it just, it was a different time. I understand. I agree. Uh, so. And I think that uh, overreach and too much red tape and all that is definitely a thing. But that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this thing is, is you know, uh, the world's a constantly changing, you know, place to live in. Uh, it's kind of like the weather. I hope, you know, I hope mm-hmm. things come back around and and we start flying right because we're not flying right right now. Uh, the way I see it right now is we're, we're liable to get ourselves into shit with one of these uh, superpowers or up and coming superpowers, and there are a couple of them that are that we've given the green light to do whatever they want to do. So I don't know, you know, I, I won't have to worry about it. But uh, my kids, possibly my grandkids, yeah, you know. Uh, well, you touched on it to begin with the fact that uh, the news media will do anything for a buck. I think our politicians have pretty much proven that unanimously yep, as well. They sure will. Uh, you know, you, and that's that's part of the problem is I think our governing body is not representative of the people who vote them into power. Yep. You send them there to do something that's not what they end up doing. Yep. And then where are you left? They forget you what it was that to, got them in there. Yeah. And this is why I don't come at Republicans the way I used to. And I also don't just fall in line with the Democrats the way that I used to. I, I don't, I don't think what you get out of government or the way that you vote is necessarily what's going to happen. It's not representative of what you get. And the people as a people are waking up. Uh, And here's a good point. Here's a good proof right here. There's a fucking truck driver. I forget what governor's race it was, uh, which state, but a fucking governor beat a seating Democrat governor, a truck driver yeah. on five thousand dollars was uh, he and he won yeah, the governor's changed. seat, you know, because they're tired of hearing a bunch of lies, you know, a bunch of promises that you, you forget about, you know, when. When that dollar's thrown at you, that dollar is evil, man. Mm-hmm. It it's the root of all evil. Yep. Uh, and as I got told, uh, Kiss, I said, you know what? I, I pretty much accepted the fact that I'm never going to be rich. So you might as well work your ass off on being happy with what you got because that's that's all that matters. Yeah, you know. So I would love to think that we could do more to change it. Um, I feel cynical now, so I don't know that we can. Maybe I'm wrong. I would love to think that because we do have kids and grandkids and everything else coming into the picture. To answer the question, I get my news primarily from YouTube personalities who report on the news. Right. Um, There are some scientists that I watch. There are political commentators that I watch. Primarily, the people that I am watching these days are the people I agree with almost unanimously, which are the populist people, the people yeah. who look at the polling of the American people, what do they want, and why is that the right thing most of the time? So it's people like Kyle Kalinske, or Crystal Ball, or Jimmy Dore. I am I am in that camp. So if you're watching Breaking Points even, yeah. uh, there's a, a right-leaning uh, person on that show, he's a commentator, Sagar and Jetty. I love listening to his, you know commentary right. I, I just 
I think he's of the right mindset. Even though there are places we disagree, I also know I had to come to terms at some point. I live in Texas. We've talked about this. Right. There are Republicans in Texas who have proven to be more forward thinking with regard to climate change and mm -hmm. technology protections and everything else than a lot of the Democrats in the rest of the nation. Yep. So sure. it is what it is, but that's that's where well, I get it from. It's it's commentators who shoot the straight dope and they're usually talking to real journalists, the people yep. that are constantly in trouble for telling you what nobody else wants to tell you, the stuff that actually has the proof to be backed up by, not right. Not just the, you know, smear pieces or here's Britney Spears cooch for the millionth time <laughs> publications. Uh, hey, that's not to look at. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, but I will, I will say one thing and I don't know why it hasn't been voted on and, and accepted on by both parties because it needs to happen. And that's fucking term limits. Yep. These people that have been in there 40 fucking years, get them the fuck out, man. Yeah, agreed. They're, they're just soaking, they're, they're padding their, po their pockets. That's all they're doing. You know, uh, rest in peace, Ruth Ginsburg. She's 90-something years old. Yep. She don't need to be. Let her, let her rest. You know, it's just give these people a certain amount of years that they can, you know, that they can politically serve. Hey, thank you. I'd go a step further. I would say that even once you're out of office, even if we have term limits, that you shouldn't be allowed to turn around and take money from the lobbying industry or go do $100,000 dinners back to back. Because even if you served for four years, uh, we have well, politicians who used to talk about, you know, when they were running, even if you serve one term, that's, that's a lot of, you know, stuff that you can change. But then yeah. they get into office and it changes. Because once they get out of office, they're either blackmailed or they, you know, do the bidding. See, the, and, and there's a lot of, wealthy. and there's a lot of behind the scenes shit that uh, supposedly is, uh, you know, they call it, you know, what do they call it? Uh, oh, fuck. What do they call that shit? Uh, like backroom dudes or something? No, they call it, uh, fuck, what's the word for it? Uh, conspiracy okay. theories. Uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of hidden shit that's going on that, that you and I and the public do, do not see that, you know, there's people and powers that have, that, that have served that are still, they, they don't want to give it up and they're not giving it up. They have foundations and corporations that they, they can, they can work through and they're actively working through those corporations to still uh, make their mark in society. Mm -hmm. It's still going on. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And I'm not going to say whether it's red or blue, but I'm just know it's going on. I think what we've determined is money is the wrong motivator when yep. it comes to governing. That Listen, back in the 60s, this is what drove the country. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's all that needs to drive things <laughs> here. You know, yeah. fuck the dollar, you know. <laughs> Coochie, drink, and, you know, some good music. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place, for another round of... The Banter Bar. I'm Shane. I'm Eric. Goodbye, Beer Snobs. Peace. Peace.